Welcome to Space Engineers. Um, today I'm going to be showing you my new ship, the Pelican Medium Cargo Freighter, which was designed for the UESC Construction Contest Number 12. So the uh, the contest requirements were for a medium uh, cargo freighter that could haul up to 10, or I'm sorry, a minimum of 10 large cargo containers, and was designed for long-term missions, um, and incorporated only the armor blocks mod, the cryopods mod, and I think there was a mod that was allowed for additional windows that, uh, that I did not wind up using. Okay, so I started building this ship, and uh, it just kind of turned into this thing. Um, when I got done looking at it, it kind of started to look like a bird. So I went ahead and added this big bill-looking thing to the front. I got done, and it looked like a pelican. So uh, I slapped some brown paint on it, make this thing a little bit uglier, like a pelican should be. Uh, it ain't a pretty, it ain't a pretty ship, but it does its job. So the uh, the ship is powered by, uh, or I'm sorry, its propulsion is housed mainly in these two big pods, one on either wing, which are filled with mass blocks. And uh, um, unlike my previous gravity drives, this. Uh, this shit, I figured out I can get away with using one layer of gravity generators um, and just switch the directionality of the gravity generators um, with the controls inside the ship. Um, so this ship it has two very efficient gravity drive engines as its main propulsion. Um, ship does have a couple of solar panels on it, provided a little bit of backup power. Um, the port and starboard lighting are green and you can kind of see the red peeking out from that side um, it's got a antenna for long-range communications and an emergency beacon that uh, is labeled as ship in distress so if you turn that on it's a it's a distress beacon um, for the long-term requirement for this ship I've added this rotating solar array um, it provides quite a bit of power I think it's two constant megawatts even in partial light um, it is connected by dual rotors, so it's, it doesn't have one set of rotors. It's got two rotors. Both of them are pointed towards this uh, central axis. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit just so you can see. You can see the rotor heads connected to the spinning part on this side and on the other side. So, uh, oh no, I got around that thing. So that, uh, that gets rid of a lot of the wobble problems and glitches that you wind up with with rotors if you attach two of them to the same object. Um, as you can see, it's attached to the ship by a merge block at the back, and uh, then it continues on to the cargo section. So uh, the idea for this ship was uh, to make kind of a, a space train. So it, it, uh, it hauls these modular cargo containers behind it, each of which holds 10, or I'm sorry, four large cargo containers for a, uh, a total of 16 on here right now. Um, I think it can handle more. I just, uh, I didn't want to overdo it, so I just left it with, uh, with 16. Then uh, continuing on towards the back, we have a, uh, this, is, uh, this is just a stabilizer that's here at the back. It helps get rid of wobble and uh, makes, makes in-flight in-flight movements a little easier to deal with. Um, it does make it a little bit sluggish, but it keeps it keeps things from breaking off when they're not supposed to break off. All right, so we're heading inside to uh, show you the interior of this uh, wondrous vessel. Um, there's two doors, one behind either wing on the port and starboard sides. Okay, so the uh, cryopods. Ship has four cryopods for storing the crew members for long-term missions, um, and a medical bay for dealing with any issues that may arise from uh, long-term cryogenic storage. Continue our tour towards the back. Um, so again, it's a long-range ship, so it's got a large battery compartment for housing uh, large amounts of power storage. There's more batteries behind this row that you can't see. Um, I believe it puts out 110 megawatts from the batteries. 
Um, here at the back, we've got the engine compartment. Most of these connectors back here just for show. Um, and then uh, it does have two reactors at the back. Um, it doesn't need them. Uh, the batteries in the solar array provide all the power the ship needs. But I figured I'd throw in a primary source of power just in case uh, in case something went wrong with the solar array. Um, or in, in case there wasn't any solar power available. Um, there's two auxiliary control stations back here at the back. All of the control stations in the ship are set up exactly the same. And all the buttons are programmed for all the ship's functions. Which uh, I'll put in the notes on the... Uh, ship description. Um, the ship has pa seating for six passengers for uh, short-range passenger missions in case it wants to do that. And then uh, the ship doesn't need to haul all those big cargo containers. It's just got a small short run. It's got two uh, cargo compartments um, inside the ship for a smaller amount of cargo. One on either side. And they're identical. All the cargo containers inside the ship are fully plumbed to uh, connectors on the outside, on the front, right, and left. Each of those connectors has a uh, docking camera to assist with docking with the station. Um, there's two auxiliary control stations immediately behind the main bridge. Both of those are uh, set up with the buttons, and they're identical to all the other control stations. Moving into the bridge, we have... Uh, it's nice encased glass bridge with two auxiliary control stations and the pilot's chair. Um, all the control stations on the entire ship are set up the same. We'll just show you this one just so that you can see the buttons kind of. Um, I'm not really going to fly around much. And turn on tabs. You can see the control bar. Okay. So uh, one and two are the gravity drive. One is forward. Two is reverse. Three is the mass blocks for the gravity drive. Be careful not to turn that on when the ship's internal gravity is on or you'll have issues. Number four is the ship's internal gravity. Five and six are the battery banks. Uh, there's two of them. They're set up independently so you don't have to run all your batteries at once. You only have to run half. Seven is a forward facing camera. Eight uh, turns on and off that spinning array with one button. Very nice. Nine is those rear engines on the back of the ship that are turned off so they don't burn up that solar array. If you go to the second tab, I, I don't think there's anything on three and four. Nope. The second tab of controls, one through five, detach the uh, the big cargo train. Number one is the back cargo container. Two, three, and four are the next cargo containers in order. Five detaches the solar array to completely separate the ship. Uh, six and seven are toggle controls for the connectors between the, uh, the cargo containers. And then uh, number eight is a rear-facing camera to uh, view the cargo detachment process. So if you get attacked by pirates, instead of just surrendering your ship, uh, hopefully the crew can dump a cargo container or two, and the pirates will let the ship go on its way. Okay, um, thank you for viewing my uh, submission to the UESC Construction Contest number 12, and uh, please, enjoy, please enjoy my ship.